Enforce Tech TV 2024, the digital format of Enforce Tech. We are at Claudia. Stevie, nice to meet you. Martin, pleasure to meet you. First of all, very nice booth you set up here. It's very big and light. The light is great. So, all done very good. Well, it's a big change from last year. Last year we, we had a narrower booth. Yeah. And this year we wanted to open it up. We have many, many more new products and we wanted to give the product space to speak for themselves. Cool. And how was the show for you so far? Um, good. Yesterday was a little bit slow. But first in the day on Monday. Yeah, yeah. First day is the travel day. And by the afternoon, things really, really picked up. We had a lot of good meetings yesterday and a lot of interest in the things that we've done so far. Cool. So please tell our viewers a little <coughs> bit about Claudia and Outrider so that they get um, good with the companies? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people will be familiar with Cloggear. It's been around for some yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but Cloggear as a brand, it, it exists to, uh, to solve problems for our professional users. So whether that's overt police, overt military, or civil defense. So where you need a profile where you clearly need to look like a soldier yeah. or a policeman, where a uniform is required, then that's what Cloggy represents. Yeah. <clears throat> Our other brand, Outrider, is a more low-profile, covert, undercover. It's more based on technical materials and more, let's say, high street design. So if you're doing, for example, surveillance work, Outrider would be the line that you would go to. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, and what did you brought here to uh, show or to display? Well, what, we, what products should we talk about? Since the past two, three years, a lot of things have changed. Um, where we're fighting, who we're fighting, and the risks and the threats that uh, our core users are exposed to has changed. So if you look at um, <clears throat> the current situation in Eastern Europe, yeah. we've almost went back 40, 50 years to almost trench warfare. So. The products that we developed in the past 10 years, they were mainly focused on... Close, close combat. Yeah, yeah. to the desert yeah. and um, Middle East warfare. Today, we are in a temperate environment in Northern yeah. Europe where the mission profile, the risk is quite different. So for that, we've created a whole new um, product uh, uh, offering around that type of uh, dismounted fighting. So a lot more like field gear instead of combat gear or a, a, a hybrid? Um, it's not so much hybrid, it's more how it's now utilized. So if we take this product here, we call this the mobility smock. Yeah. So typically, today when we're fighting, the plate carrier will be worn next to the body. Of course. The problem you then have is in dismounted warfare or trench warfare, the old systems and uh, plate carriers that were used everything was attached. Yeah. So the current fighting is trenches, in vehicles, out vehicles, and it's very dynamic. Yeah. So this product is more, we've taken some of the techniques that we've learned from the outdoor world, and we've brought it into the military. So if you take this product here, the mobility smock, it's cut very short at the front. Mm -hmm and very long at the so, back. So more like a field jacket on the front, but like a smock in the back. Exactly that, mm -hmm. yeah. So if we take this here, you, you, if you can imagine, the plate carrier will be mounted yep. here. This goes over the plate carrier, and this effectively becomes your load carriage system. Exactly. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like a smock should have. A lot and, of 11, and a lot of pockets. All the bits and pieces. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, what, how you would utilize this, you yeah. would have your plate carrier, your smock, and then your chest rig with your magazines, yeah. your grenades, that type of thing. Okay. So you wear a low profile plate carrier underneath? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And Great. if we look at the hood, for example, the hood takes a lot of influence from alpine uh, climbing. So the problem you had in the past with the smock, when you turned, the hood always stayed yeah. there. With the design we've done here, when you turn with the weapon, the hood turns with you. So okay. you, you would never tactically have your hood up, yeah. but you could be in a situation where that could happen. Great.
temperate, uh, we're now in Northern Europe, so it's a more temperate environment. So camouflage also needs to adapt or to be adapted to that environment. So in this example here, we have the multicam tropic pattern, which works really, really well yep. in the Northern Europe type environment. As you can see, everything is color matched. So Velcro, tabs, rank slide. And of course, a lot of buttons for- A lot of buttons, yeah. but also a with zipper. a zipper also. Yep. So we have insect protection, where you're lying on your belly and you have the backup of the buttons and the classic uh, smoke. Great, great. And let's talk about the pants. Mm -hmm. The pants that we, we would match with this product, because the uh, mission profile has changed, you don't need so many features. So we've reduced the pants, we call it reduced to the maximum. What do you really need when you're in dismounted combat? Probably hand pockets, cargo pockets, and maybe some hip pockets. Yep. That's pretty much it. So if you go back a few years, 10, 15 years, we never had, all, maybe longer, maybe 20 years, we never had all the features yeah. that we currently see. We just had see. a BDU with two pockets on the... Exactly that. Yeah. And we're going back to the basics, because that's really what the dismounted soldier needs. He doesn't need a lot of extra stuff. When you've got so many pockets, you start to forget where you put your equipment. So we reduce it back to the maximum, and it becomes much easier for the soldier to organize and uh, orga organize his equipment and allow him to move more freely. Okay, and uh, I really <coughs> like the design of your pant in the knee area because mm -hmm. um, normally you have a combat pant with, with external knee pads mm -hmm. and I, I personally don't like that mm -hmm. because it's always some kind of issues with infrared, for example, if you have plastic on front mm -hmm. and Often it's not really needed, especially if you go in the trench or field yep. use. You, you don't need external knee pads often, I, I would say. Well, then, I'm not that uh, experienced, but um, that's my, my field of view of this. Well, it's a good point. So the, the knee pad evolved through, we'll go back 20, 25 years. And when you're in an, in an urban environment, I completely understand where you have a lot of, course. of uh, uh, debris and uneven yep. ground. The problem it brings though, is it, it can create an unstable shooting platform. So yep. from a kneeling position, the, the knee pad can make it unstable. Yep. We've also seen, we've heard reports that some people were using the knee pads to slide. I've never heard of anybody other than Call of Duty or Hollywood, <laughs> yeah. actually, you slide into a shooting yeah, position. Yeah. It, it doesn't happen. So for us, we use um, a ceramic coating. Yeah. So it allows the flexibility and durability, yeah. but we can still have the soft knee insert behind. So if you need to take a knee to take a bearing, yeah. you have that facility, but you don't have the rigidness and the yeah. stiffness and, of and a And you cap. also added the holes to get an external knee pad like yeah. the D30, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's an interesting point also, because if you're doing CQB type tasks, if you're climbing in a window, that knee pad, we've had reports of it, of it catching and breaking. Mm -hmm. So depending on the, the mission profile, the user has the option. If they want a hard kneecap, they can do it. Yeah. That's their choice. It's not for me to say, you must do this. You have the choice to do it yourself. Cool. And Speaking about uh, military personnel, you also thought about the um, counterpart for men. So you also thought about the, the women's? Absolutely. Women. Um, if we look at the distribution in the military now, so we have in regular military, we have somewhere in the region of, <clears throat> depending on country, between 15 and 20% of the regular military is made up of females. Yeah. If you go to the reservists, that, that percentage goes up dramatically. In some areas, as much as 40% of the personnel are female. Yeah. They d the female deserves every bit as good equipment of as the male. Of course. So this year, we're introducing what we call female fit. We went back to the basics and looked at the ergonomics of what a female needs. So hips, waist, range of movement, and this year, 2024, we're releasing our own female fit collection. Perfect. Yeah. And you also do different 
kind of uh, uniforms for different environments. So you have a, um, a thicker fabrics and, and, and more breathable for jungle tropical environments, right? Yeah. So we have two lines when it comes to a battle dress uniform. We have classic, yeah. which would be um, like a 220 gram ripstop. Yeah. This is what most people will be used yeah. to. Then we have our ATS, Advanced Textile Solution. And this is much lighter, more breathable, faster drying, and we also- But still dur durable. Oh, extremely yeah. durable. It's based on Cordura fiber, and it has mechanical stretch. So when you need to make a large dynamic move or a step up, then the pant stretches with you, whereas the classic material does not have stretch. So the classic pant is slightly bigger made. Very impressive. I wish uh, that your products will get a lot of contracts in the military, because I think that's the good stuff. Yeah. I mean, last year when we introduced the ATS, it was yeah. a lot of popular sizes yeah. were sold out very yeah. quickly. Um, this year we expect it to be even busier. So the supply and demand, we've already addressed that. We're anticipating at least two production runs this year. And then for next year, 2025, we expect four production runs wow. so that we have a continuous and regular supply cool. of our core product. And also your products are in use in the Enforce Tech Village outside. The guys are yeah, using it and yeah. I already uh, <laughs> talked here to the other guys on the booth and uh, asked what is the feedback from there and they are very happy with that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And the, the ladies were here yesterday. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, we had a short debrief. Yeah. We had a small beer yeah. and a short debrief. <laughs> and the feedback was very, very positive. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And even they, they brought um, their points of criticism, what they expect mm -hmm. with, the, with their equipment. That's mm -hmm. also very important, I think. It's always um, important to be honest with, with someone who's developing products because no one gets better if you just say, oh, it's the best, it's the best, everything is good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've heard that yeah. story. I've been in this business a long time. Yeah and the next generation is the best. What we try to do here is we try to put the person at the, at the center. Because the yeah. if you think about the, the services, you have Air Force, Navy, and Army. Air Force and Navy, you tend to put the person on the equipment. Yeah. In the Army and the uh, Marines, the, the equipment goes on the person, so it's the opposite. So we need to think about there is not one silver bullet that solves all the problems across three services. Our focus is professional high-end users, and we build their products around their mission profile. Perfect. Do you want to say anything else? Or do, are, we, are we done yet? <laughs> it's entirely up to you. I could talk here the whole day. We have a whole... Yeah. If people are here, um, if, if this is shown in time, they should come visit us. They should come and see Outrider Tactical completely new product line, some load carriage solutions we have. Um, we always forget that the person has to get to a place yeah. with their equipment. So we've addressed that problem with our uh, load carriage um, products, range of bags for Outrider and also Claw Gear. For example, our largest 100, 100 liter bag is sized to fit a NATO pallet. Yeah. So you can stack them crisscross and fill an auto pallet. So we're also thinking about not only when you're fighting, but how do you get to the fight? Yeah. And afterwards, hopefully, get back from the fight intact. Yeah, that's all what's needed. That's what's yeah. needed, yeah. Very impressive. Stevie, thank you so much for your time. Martin, that thanks you, for your time. That you showed us the, the products. That's it from that's it from Krogia. So we are out and have a look what's also new on Enforce Tech 2024.